My children disclosed just sexual abuse in early 1993. They were masturbating. They were pulling their pants down at the uh, supermarket. They started having oral sex with my St. Bernard, inserting, uh, inserting pens and pencils into the dog's rectum. The behavior got worse and worse and worse. I woke up one morning. I don't usually talk about this stuff. I woke up one morning to the bread, um, you know, the butcher block that you cut bread on, because I'm a vegetarian, so it wasn't a butcher block. And there was a huge bread knife in the middle of the butcher block with a big pool of ketchup in the middle of it. And that was on my kitchen table. And I said to my children, what is this? Who did this? What, what does this mean? And my son John said, Mom, this is some of the things that we have to see and that have been done to us. I knew I had a big, big problem, and I had no idea what it was called. I called all over the country. I had children's drawings for the police. My husband was under arrest for sodomy and oral sex with my children. And I had all kinds of drawings that had circles and people with, uh, there was black candles always in the middle of these tables and, and all this uh, oral and anal sex pictures. And I went to the Catholic Church and I said, I don't know what this is, but it seems to me these, these drawings are significant. There are all kinds of symbols I don't understand and, and uh, devil heads and, and goat's heads. And I had no idea what, I did not know what satanic ritual abuse was church asked me if I ever had a psychiatric exam and uh, I said actually I'm completely sane I just know that there's symbols in these pictures no one would help me even though there was a prosecution going on they said if you ever bring up satanic ritual abuse your credibility is lost and you'll just be a kook and it doesn't exist and it's not organized in America just focus on child sexual abuse so I took my children to a child sexual abuse hospital and while they were being treated, and I had legal custody of my children, and my husband and his lawyers and the judge found out my children were in a, an expert hospital, they confiscated my house, everything I've ever owned, from my baby pictures to my clothes. I walked away with literally the clothes we had on our backs, took my cars, my federal post office box mail, my income, my assets. I lost everything by taking my children to an expert on child abuse. It was trying to stop me from what my children could disclose from being uncovered to try and just break so that we had no assets to have my children have medical attention. The children being treated for sexual abuse and I had provided all the documentation and one day the doctor said to me I need you to come into my office. She said this is a classic case of SRA. I had no idea. I mean SRA is that like an Irish uh, Republican? Or anything. I don't know what SRA is. She said, satanic ritual abuse. And she showed me the drawings that the children were doing her office. And they were of blood sacrifice, of people cutting their arms and dripping blood in chalices, of chalices with devil heads, and on and on and on. It includes group sex. It includes children being killed. Because I'm only one person, and my life has been annihilated, although I, I have to say it's being rebuilt for the better. But John and Ben, my boys, are 11 and 8 and have lived for 15 or 16 months in the home of a satanic abuser who has been documented as a member of a cult, who 25 people in the state's attorney in Connecticut are investigating and have substantiated sexual abuse and the cult. And yet the governor and no one has been acting to protect my children. So it makes me wonder just how high this goes. But I'll tell you a story about a little boy that affected my life. And I guess it's besides John and Ben, who I always think about and who I want to stop this from ever happening to another child again. I heard a story about a little eight-year-old boy. His mom had taken him to protect him. And they were found. And I had been underground for three years, by the way. The mother and this little boy were found. The little boy was taken to a basement. He was crucified alive. First, he was skinned. When they torture the children, it causes a physical reaction of the endomorphins in your body to just increase because of the terror and the pain. So when the Satanists drink the blood, 
they actually get like a chemical, re you know, a high, like a drug high from the blood of a tortured victim. And this little boy was found in the basement dead, with no blood, skinned alive and crucified. The issue, I guess, again, is on the one side, uh, the possible uh, level of um, or amount of up to 5 million victims with another 5 million that may be out there in the United States. Not that's not and again we've got this occurring in Europe all through England and uh in Canada. There's a reason for this and we need to take a deep look into the issue of satanic ritual abuse. I grew up in what I thought was a fairly normal family, living a fairly normal life. And then at the age of 33, uh, when I was living in a Buddhist meditation center, I started to remember um, being abused as a child. Uh, and not just abused, but tortured and um, serially abused. It, it, it was a really terrifically hor horrendous period. Uh, when that recall began. Um, I wondered about my sanity, and then I realized that these were, were true recollections. Uh, more and more came back. And now I've put together enough pieces of the jigsaw puzzle to know that from the age of 11 months until I was uh, 12 years old, I was sexually abused and raped uh, by 53 men, um, bought and sold, and uh, passed around at parties. Um, it was very painful remembering that, and many people who go through the kind of abuse I went through don't remember, uh, mainly because of the pain involved, I suspect. Um, the, I can't remember which agency it was, but one of the UN agencies estimated that in 2005, uh, the, the value of children sold as sex slaves around the world was 21 billion US dollars that year. I don't know how many children that represented. Um, but this is big business. And it's very well protected business. Uh, it's completely under the radar. And that is because the radar is controlled at the top by people who are involved in the business and who are making a lot of money from it and indulging their appalling preferences. And I think people should really be very aware that the interplay between secret societies, fraternities, groups of uh, interested parties such as bankers, um, the Freemasons, and pedophiles. This interface is very complicated, very complex. It, in, it infiltrates the judiciary, the police, all of the agencies that are supposed to protect us from it. And um, it has a very long history. It's, it's been used for four and a half thousand years or so as part of human society's methodology for controlling the lower classes of humor as they're perceived by them. These people are doctors, lawyers, politicians. These people are people that you would think to be respectable members of society. These people are often very powerful. Pedophilia is not about sex, it's about power. Uh, so anybody who, in this world who has grabbed lots of power, especially if they do so in any ruthless kind of manner, uh, one should suspect or at least question as to whether they might have uh, predilections in this direction. Anywhere, if you live in a city, you know, within 250 yards or a couple of blocks of where you're living, there are hundreds of children being raped at night, almost certainly. It's happening everywhere. It's about a third or a quarter of the population. Nobody knows because people forget. People forget because of the pain.